Hello and welcome back. In today's video, let's have a quick look on how we can put a text on a road in a proper way. Let's use this image as an example. The idea is now to put a speed limit text on the road. First, let's start by adding the text, which in this case will be the speed limit in kilometers per hour, and I think 80 is acceptable for this road. The text needs to be white, so let me adjust that. Just make sure that the complete text is selected with the Select tool to change the color of the text. If not, then only the color of the newly entered text will be in white. Now, to make this look like a speed limit sign, I'm going to add a circle around it. For this, I'm going to use the Ellipse tool and draw a circle. I will keep the shift key pressed to make sure it will be a perfect circle. Let's now convert the circle into a donut using the toolbar. With the control handle I can change the thickness of the donut. This looks about right. And before moving on, let's position it so the text is centered in it. Usually when you want to put a text on an object, you will need to adjust it so it has the same perspective. As I want both the text and the circle to be treated as a single object, I will group them. Once we have our group, I can now apply a perspective filter to it. As the text and the circles are in the group, the perspective changes will be applied to both of them. Finding the right perspective is a bit of trial and error. Just experiment with it until it looks realistic. And don't worry too much, as we used a live filter, we can always adjust if needed. Let me also reposition the group so the sign will be further down the road. As mentioned before, because I used a live filter for the perspective, I can still adjust and fine tune it after I reposition it. Somehow, the current version of Affinity I am using, there might be a bug in it with blend ranges and filters. If a layer or a group has a filter applied to it, the blend ranges are not applied. As a workaround for this, I'm going to group this again, so I can apply the blend ranges to it. This is necessary to make the text blend in naturally with the road. With the group selected, press the cog item in the layers panel to open up the blend ranges dialog. In the underlying composition range, we are going to keep the shadows, so that we get the structure of the road into the text. I will add an additional point in the middle and move it up, so that more of the white is shown through, just to make sure the text is still predominant and not faded out. Now normally I wouldn't do the following step, but it seems my computer today is a bit lazy and slow. To minimize processing time, I'm going to render this group to a pixel layer. But before doing that, I'm going to add a snapshot of the current document so I might be able to come back to this point and adjust the perspective or the text. Remember, if the snapshot panel is not visible in your setup, you can always enable it from the View Studio menu. Excellent, now I can rasterize the group. Let me check the blend range of this new pixel layer we just created as a result of the rasterize action. Nice, it has kept the blend ranges. Now most of the tutorials about text on the road will stop right here. But the blend is not yet perfect in my opinion, so I'm going to apply a couple of more steps to finish the effect. First, if you look closely, the text and the circle still have perfect borders, which looks very unnatural. So I'm going to add a little bit of distortion by using the distort filter. Just a tiny bit, so the edges look more natural. If I zoom in, you notice two things. First, as mentioned earlier, the blend ranges are gone as we applied a filter to the layer. And secondly, the distort filter created very harsh edges. To fix the latter, I'm going to add a Gaussian blur and blur it a tiny bit. A tiny amount of blur just makes it look more natural. 
As for the blend ranges issue, the blend range is still set in the layer, but not applied. Just as before, to fix that, I'm going to apply the same trick. Group it and then reapply the blend ranges to the group. Almost done. To finish up, I'm going to duplicate the original image and move it on top of the layer stack. Now, I can modify its blend range in a way that some of the darker areas are printed on top of the text. It just gives that extra realism to it. To really fine tune it, I can play and adjust the opacities of the filters applied to the text. So the distort and blur effects are a bit more dimmed down. We also need to slightly adjust the opacity of the main group to make sure it fits nicely with the rest of the image. Awesome, that looks actually pretty good. If we look at the other white lines on the road, you might notice that they have a black border or a shadow. So optionally, we can try to recreate this on our text. By using the FX panel and the FX dialogs, I can add a slight border and a shadow to the speed limit text we created. Again, optionally, to improve the blending a bit more, I can group it again and apply another blend range to it. Nice! A minor adjustment in size and rotation and we're done. The cool part is now that because we use different blend ranges, I can move it to some other location on the road. For example, to the area with the shadow from the tree and it will still look awesome. Pretty nice. And there you have it. To summarize. First, adjust the perspective, then apply blend ranges, followed by adding some filters like distort and blur to make it look more natural, and finally, apply the image on top of it with a blend range. This way, you get these perfect looking texts on the road. I hope you liked this video. If you did, don't forget to hit the like and subscribe buttons. Thank you so much for watching. Keep safe and keep being creative.